fist me hard. Let's do this. Can it beat the i30N? We'll see. Oh, oh, whoa. Wow. Oh. oh. <laughs> Guys, I'm super excited. I'm here testing the new JR Corolla versus the i30N. Two of really the best hot hatches that you can buy at the moment. As you guys know, my favorite category of cars is hot hatches because they deliver so much for really what is so little. So today we're gonna be comparing the all new Toyota JR Corolla and we're gonna compare that against the Hyundai i30N, a car I've been living with for the last 12 months. The absolute benchmark for the hot hatches. Absolute benchmark benchmark of hot hatches delivers everything at a really really good price so the i30n has been creeping up in price this one here is the top spec premium with a sunroof it will set you back fifty six thousand dollars with this eight speed auto though you can spend less and get yourself the six speed manual we just wanted to give it the best shot against the gr corolla the gr corolla though will cost you over 60 grand what is it jacob that's 63 before on roads that's a lot of money but you do get a lot of car for that money as you will see so we're going to pit these two cars head to head and see which car is better in both of our opinions. So you guys definitely don't want to miss this one. If you want to see the full written review and get a few more insights, head to castles.com. We've got that live now. We're going to be doing a full review of this. So make sure you're subscribed. It's coming out in like two days. And no matter what car you guys are buying, we can get you the absolute best financing deal. Pre-approved in under two minutes with no impact to your credit score. And for every settled loan through us, castles.com slash finance, you will get a $150 fuel card. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. Let's get straight into it. Let's do it. We're gonna start with Old Faithful here for the exterior looks, and that's the i30N. You got these really cool tail lights. You've also got a spoiler up here, i30N badge. And down the bottom, you get some oh, scratchy plastic and a bit of a diffuser down there. Also, the dual exhaust tips. And after the exterior section, we're gonna play that for you. Coming to the GR Corolla, and I'll be totally honest with you, man, I think this thing looks better from the rear. This has clearly got a body kit on it. This is not the same as a standard Corolla. This is built in an entirely different factory. Uh, and so this car is actually wider than a standard Corolla, both front and rear. And you can really, really see that. And that's because it's got a completely different drivetrain underneath. You got your lights here. That does look like a standard Corolla. And Jacob, you don't get a spoiler here. That, I don't know, just looks a bit like a Corolla from like here upwards, but here down, it looks amazing. Down the bottom, you're gonna notice the uh, tri exhaust tips. Now you might be thinking, why were they do that it just looks a bit silly first of all i think it looks awesome this thing actually has a higher state of tune and also internals than a gr yaris and so this was actually supposed to come with just dual exhaust tips but the back pressure of the exhaust system was such that it actually needed a third outlet that's a pretty cool fact man it looks pretty cool too yeah 26.3 psi that's insane love this as well the gr corolla badge now coming to the side of the gr corolla that's where you see these fat haunches again so cool now the gr corolla here in australia is running these 18 inch wheels we get one spec as standard as i said they're also running a worse tire than pretty much anywhere around the globe these are yokohama tires Toyota Australia say that that's because owners want to put on whatever tires they want. I think it's a bit of a cop out to be honest. You have some privacy glass there and you've also got keyless entry and go. GR4 down there with these really cool side skirts. Again, this has a very different body to a standard Corolla and it's built in an entirely different way. There are more spot welds on this, more adhesive, so it has a stiffer chassis. We have the blacked out mirror caps here, GR badge, all of this functional aero running from, again, these 18 inch wheels that comes in from the front again completely different at the front you got some huge air inlets to help streamline air over the side and help cool the gr brakes you've got standard corolla lights so it doesn't look too different there you've also got some functional aero on top of the bonnet there too check out this massive grill it's huge with all of this inlet here even though this thing is powered by a three cylinder and we'll come back to that still needs a lot of air as i said because it has a huge i would call it f off turbo that's, that's how I would describe it, Jacob. You've also got your GR badge there. And then coming to the i30N, I still love this thing, man. I think the headlights on this look better. It's just got such a cool daytime running light and enormous grill because this thing has a bigger engine than that, for sure. 
You've got your end badge there, more functional aero, just like the GR Corolla, because that also helps to streamline air across the side. But otherwise, there isn't too much going on with the Hyundai i30N but it's still an absolute classic to me. And personally, I can't tell which one I like more from the front. So let me know guys in the comment section. Jacob, what are your thoughts? Oh, I mean, the i30N is definitely more understated. So yeah. as a daily driver, I'd probably prefer it. Interesting. Yeah, no, I just, I love the kind of, I don't know, this is such JDM, like early 2000s, boy racery design. Boy racery is the perfect way to describe of it. Of the Toyota Corolla. Now, coming to the side of the i30N, you get these 19 inch wheels here. They're actually forged alloys too, which is really cool. Wrapped in Pirelli P0s, not my favorite tire, but they are at least better than the Yokohama tires that you get on the GR Corolla. So I guess I can't complain too much. A, same thing, keyless entry and go blacked out mirror caps. This one actually comes with a sunroof because we have the premium here. Premium plus sunroof, it still comes in quite significantly cheaper than a GR Corolla, so keep that in mind. And you've also got a side skirt, not quite the same because that's like body match, but this is just black plastic with the end badge. Very cool, man, what do you think? Very, very cool. Which would you take based on looks solely? Based on looks, probably the GR Corolla. I think I would too. Again, yeah. let me know in the comments, guys. Let's check out the interiors. spent now 12 months in i30N products, you start to really notice that yeah, the quality of the interior isn't necessarily as good as competitors. You've got to save costs somewhere. So, I mean, you touch around, you get soft touch materials, but they're definitely not the nicest feeling. It's a sea of black plastics in here. I don't really mind it, but you just got to keep that in mind. Really like this steering wheel. Honestly, one of my favorites. You have buttons to control absolutely everything. It is so logical. You've got these paddle shifters here that work really well. You've also got your drive mode selectors there. Technology in here is some of the best, just because this display here is so quick, so snappy. You can see so much information on it, including the end mode stats, which is really cool. And you've still got your shift lights up at the top, but that's starting to feel a little bit old school. Obviously it's not a manual here, but this dual clutch is just so good. If I would ever recommend someone to buy an i30N, which we do all the time, it's the dual clutch. That's the way to go. It's just so damn good. These seats, now, a bit of a mixed bag in one sense. So they look really cool. They feel really cool. They've got the glowing end badge up top. So really sick design. The sides do tend to degrade a little bit quickly. I've noticed that. The other thing I've noticed, and Jacob, we spent so much time in this car driving it to like Adelaide. We spent hours and hours sitting in this car. Uh, the one thing that I complain about is that it just doesn't have any lumbar support, which does suck. It sucks a little bit, yeah. Uh, not the biggest deal. I've, I've felt worse seats, but yeah, it's not the greatest. But up front, it's a really nice place to be. Definitely not premium, but gets the job done. The back seats of the i30N are a pretty good story. First of all, you get this like suede, like Alcantara back here. The seats are nice, they're really well bolstered. You get a couple of cup holders within there, and apparently a spiderweb, Jacob. How does that happen? I have no idea. You don't get any air vents back here and there's no way to charge devices either. That is not a good thing. I'm um, starting to call that out on more cars now. But at five foot 11, I have heaps of leg room. Toe room is pretty good and headroom is great there too. So let's see how the Corolla stacks up. Okay, so jumping into the interior of the GR Corolla. In some ways, it's a lot better than i30N. In other ways, it's not quite as good. So. What are the ways it's better? Well, first of all, soft touch materials absolutely everywhere. And it's it just feels nice, man. I actually think I prefer the steering wheel of the GR Corolla, man. Ooh, look, it's similarly really functionally laid out. So I can see why you think that. It does feel nice to hold on to. It feels a little bit smaller, which in some ways is better, but I'm, I don't know. 
I'm neither here nor there, to be honest. I just wish I had the drive mode selectors on it, like the i30N. As I said, guys, we're gonna be doing a full review going more in depth. So two days, make sure you subscribe. So you've got your drive mode selector here, which the GR Yaris didn't have. You've also got your all-wheel drive selector. We'll come back to that. You've got your six-speed manual here. It's a really nice shifter, very notchy. Not gonna say it's the nicest I've ever felt, but it's still pretty damn good. Even though the seats don't look quite as cool, as the i30N seats, I think they're just a bit more practical. Probably not as bolstery, but they just feel a bit more supportive, especially on longer drives. You don't get any lumbar support though, to be fair. And this is a newer car. That car's done almost 20,000 Ks. This one's done like 1,500. So I don't know. I can't really make a call right now, but just clocking that, I think I prefer these seats. Technology is 50% better, 50% worse. It's better with this screen up in front. This is a really high quality display. You can toggle through a few different things and you can just see plenty of of information and I love the tachometer at the top when you put it in sport mode. The infotainment display though is really small. It it just, I don't know, I don't like it. It's not the fastest to respond. It's functional enough and it is connected to a JBL sound system, which sounds awesome, better than the i30N's standard whatever speakers. But I don't know, this is a bit of a letdown. But that aside, it's still a really nice place to be. Jacob, let's check out the back seat. Okay, so the back seats are probably where I prefer the i30N. We've set up this passenger seat to be the same as my driver's position. Uh, you do get a little bit of leg room. I'm 5'11", not the tallest person. And toe room is really not amazing, but it's okay. Headroom is pretty decent as well, though as soon as you put your head to the left, you whack the roof. So, so the i30N is definitely bigger and you're gonna be a lot more comfortable getting three people across. You don't get any air vents, but you can share a 12 volt socket and USB-C port. So that's pretty good because the front seats don't actually get an armrest. I think that's because of the placement of the shifter. If there was an armrest, it would feel a bit weird, I think. So yes, you don't get a center armrest and that's another negative to the Corolla. Jacob, boot space. Alrighty. Boot space is where the i30N demolishes the GR Corolla. You get 390 liters here with the second row up. You can put it down and get a bit more. I say a bit more, you get a lot more technically, but there's a brace bar in the i30N specifically. So that just stops anything from sliding through. You can still get things over. It's just a bit of a pain in the bum. Still, it's a much better deal than what you get in the GR Corolla because the GR Corolla has 213 liters of boot space. It's really, really small. You do get a little bit of underfloor storage, but really not that much. Now you might be thinking, well, that's because it's got an all-wheel drive system. Like not really, because the standard Corolla also comes with only 217 liters. That's four liters more, Jacob. It's just the platform. It's just the platform. Look, you can put down the back seats and get more room though. And that technically is a little bit more practical in some ways than the i30N. So i30N wins, but to each their own. So powering the i30N is this awesome two liter four cylinder turbo petrol engine, pumps out 206 kilowatt of power, 392 newton meters of torque. In this spec, we wanna give it the best chance against the GR Corolla. We've got it here in the dual clutch transmission. You can also get it with a six speed, but this is the eight speed dual clutch. And all of that power drives the front wheels and front wheels only. That's where it really differs to this. This is the 1.6 liter three cylinder turbo petrol. This thing pumps out 220 kilowatt of power. That's 10% more than a GR Yaris. And that's because it has actually slightly different internals. And also the turbo is running at a higher boost pressure, hence the triple exhaust at the back. But it puts out the same 370 newton meters of torque. And both of these engines have very, very different driving characteristics. Partially because this thing as well is all wheel drive. It has a really trick all wheel drive system, but it's not quite as trick as you might think or have been told in the past. So we'll come back to that when we drive this thing. But for now, all of that power is sent through a six speed manual transmission, though there are some pretty solid rumors that this thing will be coming with an automatic sometime in the future. Jacob, I think that's enough rambling on. Let's see how these things do zero to hundred kilometers an hour. Let's launch them. Okay, launching the i30N, we just press N mode. Then we go to performance options and activate launch control. Now, of course, we have to put the car into N mode. Let's do this. Okay, bro, let's do this. Fist me. Let's do it. I'm scared. Oh, just wheels. Oh. Wheel spins the whole way. Oh. Zero to 100 in 6.79 seconds. I ain't surprised. Yeah. Let's launch the Corolla. Okay. 
Okay, we're putting the car into sport mode. We're gonna put the all drive in track and we're gonna turn traction off. Friend, fist me hard. Let's do this. Can it beat the i30N? We'll see. Oh, oh, whoa, wow. Oh, oh. oh. that Zero. was so close. Zero to 100 in 5.46 seconds. Very impressive because we're both sitting in here. Alrighty, friend, here we are, driving our baseline, our favorite, maybe. Okay, friend, now because this is the dual clutch, let's put it into manual mode, make things fair, and use it only as a manual. I like that idea. Oh. Oh. Oh my God, this thing has so much power. Oh, <laughs> dude. That exhaust. It's unreal, I love it. Okay, so this thing, first of all, the oh limited God. slip differential in this, the electronically controlled limited slip differential is amazing. Because we are in end mode, the suspension is incredibly stiff, just how you want it on these back roads, and we will see how comfortable it is later. But for now, we're gonna keep dropping gears. Oh, holy crap, man. Oh, it just pulls really, Hard. First of all, let's talk about the way that this thing handles. I like every time I take it on a back road, I'm just so shocked. Honestly, they call this a corner carver. It genuinely is. And this dual clutch is just the best way to do it, in my opinion, because you can still keep it in manual and row through your own gears, however the hell you want. This limited slip differential, even though it's all through to the front wheels, is unbelievably good. It's incredible around corners. I mean, it's not amazing from a standing start. It definitely struggles for traction off the line, but Hell yeah. it just pulls, it just pulls, it just pulls. It does not stop, man. This thing is so good. This is a really, this is the car to beat and for a lot cheaper as well. I don't know, we'll see how the Toyota Corolla performs in a second, but this It's gonna is, really have to blow us away. It's gonna have to blow us away. It's just unreal. And this is my favorite part, man. I just, a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. You definitely can't do this in the GR Corolla. <laughs> All right, let's see how this thing performs at Saucy Corner. Bro, this is where the GR Corolla is gonna destroy this car. <laughs> you reckon? Tickle my little pickle. Let's do it. Oh, just for that reason. Yeah. It just doesn't stop pulling, man. How does a four cylinder oh. do that? Okay. <laughs> okay, understeered like crazy around yeah. there. I mean, but it, we... it did it really quick. <laughs> wow. Holy crap, man. That is gonna be tough to beat. Okay, the last thing I wanna test is comfortability because- Comfortability. This is this is tough for the i30N. It's got very stiff suspensions. So even though it has adaptive dampers, even in normal mode, it's still pretty stiff. I don't, I, like honestly, I don't mind it, but you, you notice it. If there's, if there's any journalists out there who have spent more time in an i30N, I would be shook. Call like, us. Call us. Let us know. Anyway, I really like this thing. It's gonna be tough to beat. Let's see how the GR Corolla performs. All right, bro. Oh, man, that's gonna be hard to beat. That's gonna be hard to <laughs> beat. Can we give it some sauce? We definitely can. Oh. Okay. It's so funny, it's almost like there's turbo lag in this. <laughs> Compared to that, yeah. Which I love. So oh. this is obviously a three cylinder, that's a four cylinder. This is technically, or maybe technically not, but anyway, it's the world's most powerful three cylinder. It's got more power than a GI Yaris, but the torque is not quite as good as for example, a Golf R or the i30N. And it's also available from 3000 RPM, which is quite hard, high up in the rev range. So you've really got to put your foot down. Oh, and then you feel it kick you in the butt. And then it just <laughs> kicks you in the butt. This thing has such a powerful turbo with a huge amount of boost that has to go through it. It's unreal. However, 
where I think that this thing loses a bit of parity within i30N, to be honest, is when you turn a corner. Now, it's still amazing. Oh my God. It has a mechanical limited slip differential at the front and the rear. But I think because it doesn't have adaptive dampers, it's got one mode, which has to be good for both road settings and, you know, out on the twisties like this. It's not quite as, I guess, adaptable around a corner. It won't quite have enough of a damper setting to be able to completely eliminate body roll like you get in the i 30 when you like, look at that. Oh, that thing is stiff, man. That thing is <laughs> stiff. Oh, oh, look at the red rev limit there. Oh. This thing sounds so cool for three cylinders, man. Oh, can I be honest with you? The i 30 has a much better exhaust sound, no oh, doubt yeah. about it. Oh yeah. But it's almost like the engine sound in this is just like you hear more of the engine. It's more real. It feels a bit more real. This whole car actually, in terms of handling, um, engine sound, everything sound, just feels more real. It's just got this charm to it. Yeah. Um, that, to be honest, the i30N, uh, it, it's like objectively better in almost every way. The i30N is faster. Really? The i30N has a larger displacement. Um, from a rolling start, this would beat it off the line because of its all-wheel drive system. Actually, let's use this all-wheel drive system here put it into 30-70 split. Now it is still front wheel drive bias and it will only send 70% of power to the rear when it can, to be honest. Otherwise the rear overheats. It's got a twin clutch system. Oh. Oh. And unfortunately there isn't any sort of coolers on the back and it's still an economy car platform. But it's almost like you don't even know, man. <laughs> it's unreal. That's great. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't really feel a massive difference switching from 60-40 to 30-70. You don't, do you? No. Even the track mode, which is 50-50, I don't know, like you don't really notice it. Because when we're doing stuff like this, it will still send the majority of power to the front. It's only when you start to input with turning the steering wheel that it actually changes anything. Speaking of, we can put the car into sport mode it was already in sport mode there you go <laughs> and that really changes the throttle response it has a single steering tune at least as far as i can tell if it does change it really doesn't change much and then we go around here wow it is a bit of a glorified front wheel drive though isn't it man a little bit a little bit i have to say it doesn't mean it's bad no it's just not quite what people think exactly all right saucy corner tickle my little pickle let's, let's see if this can do better than the i30n Always box down a little bit. I mean, the i30 and wheel spin, so oh, can't really fault this. It's definitely got better grip. Okay, let's go second gear around a corner. Oh, we yeah. understeered quite a bit there. Oh. Okay, come on. Let's do this again. Mm. Quite a bit of understeer still, but like it does a really good job. I tell you what, though, the acceleration out of the corner does feel really good in this car. It does feel but going into that corner, you can really feel the weight. Look, we're not pooping on the car, it's no. amazing. But after the i30N, that thing is just incredible. I don't know how it does it, to be honest. Yeah. I'm gonna be sad to give that thing back. Let's just quickly talk about the comfort of this, because if we put the car back into normal mode and we just let the car do what it does, it's, it's a really good daily, man. Yeah, I could really definitely good. live with this car, man. Definitely better than the i30N in terms of daily comfort. I, I would tend to agree, especially because of the active safety. <laughs> like that doesn't get, for example, adaptive cruise control. This does. Uh, so yes, that will kind of be a bit better in uh, bumper to bumper traffic. This car can't obviously row through its own gears, but um, I don't know, man. As a daily, this thing is really good. Yeah, it's probably one of the most livable manuals you can buy. Probably. Okay, so final thoughts. Which is better? This is really hard, man. <laughs> I can't even choose, honestly. It's so hard because each are good in their own ways. Look, objectively speaking, I think the i30N is a better car. It's faster in a straight line, but you don't consider launching. It is way more customizable. It's got more of a modern feeling to it. But the Toyota Corolla is, I think, a better place to spend time, especially as a driver. You just have this really mechanical feel. You have to wring the neck out of the engine. And it's got that really cool all-wheel drive system that is still front wheel drive biased. So I'm not gonna lie, man, if given the choice and considering price, I think I would take the GR Corolla. What about you? Well, my mind is telling me N, but my body. 
tell you, Corolla. <laughs> Let us know what you guys think though, down in the comment section. If you like this video, please do leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you around. Read our full detail comparison on castles.com. If you need finance, click the link over there. And why don't you go watch our individual reviews? We'll update it when the GR Corolla one comes out in two days. Thank you guys very much. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.